Hey everybody, this is my brain. I was able to 3D print it, and if you come along with me on this video, I can show you how I got it done, and how you can do the same thing with yours. So, let's go see how it happened. So a couple years ago, I had to get an MRI taken of my brain. Everything's okay now, but it was a pretty scary time in my life. I wanted to see if I could turn that data, those files, into something cool that would help me remember it and just have as a cool piece to keep around the house. So I created this, a one-to-one -one scale version of my brain, which I 3D printed and mounted on this little pedestal. So this project really began in earnest when I realized that a healthcare provider is legally required to send you all of your healthcare data at any time. I submitted a written request for this MRI file and they ended up sending it to me on a DVD. And with that, I then dove into how do I actually read that data and turn it into something I can actually use. Like most medical imaging, MRIs are sent in what's called a DICOM format. And this stands for Digital Imaging and Communication in Medicine. And it's just a standardized way to share medical imaging with patient data baked in. And lucky for us, there's a super powerful, free, and easy to use software called 3D Slicer. And 3D Slicer is an open source project that lets you view and manipulate all sorts of medical images and really do more or less whatever you want if you have the uh, requisite coding experience to make it happen. The first thing I did for this project was use a plugin called Swiss Skull Stripper, very fun name, to go ahead and isolate just the brain from the skull and other soft tissue. From there, I used some basic thresholding, snipper, and smoothing functions to go ahead and isolate just the area of the brain I wanted. And with that done, I went ahead and used two other programs, Mesh Mixer and Mesh Lab, to do a little bit of sculpting, clean up some printing defects, and generally get things suitable for 3D printing. Now, as much as I wish, I could just snap my fingers and have the project be done. Sadly, that's not quite how this works. In order to reduce the print time from actual days to hours, I went ahead and split the brain up into three distinct segments. Then with those segments, I decided there's no need for all that hollow space in the middle, so I added a negative volume to go ahead and carve out all that useless space, which comes in handy later when it's time to add the electronics. And speaking of electronics, while the brain pieces were printing, I decided to go ahead and start prototyping that part of the project. I did some test prints with some old scraps that I had laying around and saw how the LEDs would diffuse within the brain. And as the first segments of the brain were coming off the assembly line, I began testing out the code I'd written for this project. Essentially, the microphone will detect any music in the room, and then using the code I've written, will map the appropriate brightness and number of LEDs that will illuminate. And without getting too technical, there were two ways I was approaching this. One, just based on the volume of the sounds, and two, using a fast Fourier transform to actually analyze the frequency and match that to the LED levels. Just imagine some really cool music going here, but you know, YouTube copyright and all that. <laughs> And after all that coding, the brain had finished printing. So after a couple cycles of Bondo to clean up any layer lines, I went ahead and coated the whole thing into several layers of paint and did a slight clear coat to give it that glossy finish. And once that was done, it was time to assemble the whole thing and see how it looked. I ran all the wires for the LEDs and microphone through the brainstem, the conduit pipe that you see here. And after the assembly, I did a quick test to make sure things were still working. Hey, hey. On the finished device, there are three main power modes. First, there are two levels of dimming, where you turn the knob a little bit and you get kind of the low level. Then if you turn it midway, you get high level full brightness. And then in the third mode, you turn it all the way to the right and you get the music activated mode. And all of this is just powered over a micro USB port. So in this case, using a battery, but you could also plug it into the wall for long-term use. And to finish off this project, I added a little commemorative plaque with a fun little message. I like to think this is my own version of Tony Stark's proof of having a heart. And before closing out this video, I'll give you a quick 20 second demo of the light show. Alrighty, well, I hope you enjoyed this video showing how I was able to create my 3D printed brain. If you're interested in trying to create one yourself, you can see my tutorial video linked down in the description or in this card right here. If you did like the video, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps grow the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe.